everyone, and welcome to your horoscope for the week of September the 11th till 17th, 2023. We have quite an interesting sky ahead of us where there are certain celestial conversations which do promise us either forward movement or breakthrough, especially regarding the themes of either the Venus retrograde or the Mercury retrograde, or better said, both of these you know, themes in our individual journeys that are going to be highlighted, and those events may speak in this sense. What is the conclusion moment, or at least a conclusion milestone, for the present moment Mercury or Venus retrograde in our lives? Yet, it is not going to necessarily feel that way. Um, of course, one of the highlights of the week is that around the 15th of September, Mercury stands still in the sky, preparing to go direct. Yet still before it does so exactly, its symbolism is greatly amplified. It's stationary. So it will again mark, like, you know, when we read a textbook and use those highlighting markers and, you know, mark a sentence or something. That is how this energy is going to feel like from a more spiritual and psychological perspective. Yet the overall tone of the week is going to have a certain degree of frustration attached to it because one of the aspects which usually you know, stays with us on and off all throughout the week is Venus holding a square with Jupiter so, you know, that can cause quite a strong frustration. Why? Because Venus is the planet of desire. And now she's charged with all the wisdom, all the passion, all the feelings that all of us have, you know, harvested during the Venus retrograde. She's not moving forward very, very fast, very quickly. So it's like grinding down on the lessons. But we also are very much aware of whatever the retrograde sparked up in our lives, in our hearts, in our feelings, as passion, as ambition, as determination to have something, get somewhere, lift something, especially that Venus is the ruler of the sign where Jupiter is retrograde at and squaring this Venus. So it's also about the five senses, the especially the pleasure centers, because satisfying a desire, a need, an ambition, or a creative impulse, or something that the inner child might want to experience, well, that will you know stimulate and feel especially rewarding in a Taurian sense because of the synergy between these two planets. Yet, us not getting there very, very fast, and being aware that we are not getting there you know, immediately or in a time that might, you know, be satisfactory to our Thorian senses, our need for that very special Venus retrograde season serotonin, uh, that is either further away in the future, and we are aware of that, or something in our lives is not permissive to fully live that, embrace that, get there in this present moment. So this is what will provide the frustration tone. Now, of course, Venus also moves, uh, makes another move, uh, connecting with Juno, Jupiter's wife, actually. So there, this celestial conversation does represent that there can be attractions happening this week, where those attractions can be, feel quite intense, quite strong. And later on, you know, Venus will start uh, squaring Uranus as well for the third and final time during her stay in Leo. So that can amplify whatever we are feeling all throughout this week, the certain kind of attraction. But what do we do with it? Do we follow along? Do we listen to our instincts, our impulses? Or is it better if we are careful? And chances are, when that final Uranus square between Venus and Uranus, of course, takes place, that might be the moment when we either um, 
make a choice or take a spontaneous random action. But until then, you know, we might have very different kind of questions, question marks within our hearts, especially Leo. Now, it is absolutely true that many other question marks are actually being answered this week. You know, Venus uh, moving forward and making key connections that answers, you know, our emotional questions mar question marks. And Mercury on the 15th is preparing to go forward and officially ending its retrograde. Now, that answers many practical, technical, methodological how do I, you know, concretely, physically do it, get there? That kind of question marks. Some of which might be very, very delightful, pleasant. They might feel like a blessing, like a proper breakthrough later on, of course, not necessarily this week, because Mercury will hold a trine with Jupiter and afterwards, finally, with Uranus because Mercury could not perfect its trine to Uranus when it went retrograde. So that energy can be quite fresh and new, even outside of the Mercury retrograde context. But that is much later on, not this week. But it's in preparation mode, hence the frustration as well, because a part of that frustration is that we sense things, we feel things. There is a strong instinctual and intuitive side activated in all of us, inside all of us, due to that Eris ongoing, very long-term Eris North Node conjunction in the sign of Aries of our heads, that which basically interprets the impulses, the instincts, the intuition conversing with us. So until we actually get to see where our instincts are guiding us, it will take more steps, more, you know, milestones reached, or simply more time. And, you know, that creates a sense of frustration. So it is actually quite dual with Neptune in the sign of Pisces retrograde. Duality is like a hallmark on all of this period, all of these retrograde months. But it will feel dual as if in certain things we are making progress or why not even breakthrough is here while for other things like almost like we're taking steps backwards but that also is you know to be expected because we are in a period when most planets are retrograde so until the 15th of september except venus and mars all of the other important major planets are retrograde. So you can imagine that in a larger sense, in a larger picture, karmically speaking, we are not really making important moves forward yet into not exactly venturing yet into new territory. That new territory will kind of begin after December this year, so into next year, or around December, you know, when Pluto is already making important an important comeback to Aquarius, and that might, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, mark even fatedly, as in what and when triggers fated events, stepping into the continuing to step into new territory. Now, with this being said, let me just share my screen with you. So here you can see how the aspects and the planets are on the 11th. So on Monday, uh, yeah, Monday. And there isn't a lot of activity here. We have the sun at the beginning of the week trining Jupiter and also uh, Uranus. But neither of these planets hold the trine uh, exactly. It already moved out from an exact trine with Jupiter, and it still yet has to get to 22 degrees of uh, sorry Virgo to perfect its trine with Uranus. But it's still an operational trine, and this is a rather optimistic energy. This is where whatever we are putting a lot of uh, focus into, you know, Virgo, intellectual focus, 
the work, the time, the ambition, the meticulosity, or the, you know, strength to double check our project, our actions, our mercurial activities, so to speak. That's also quite an important, you know, effort because we are doubling, doubling in the energy that we place into something. So, you know, it's very self-explanatory that the chances of success, the chances for it to go as planned or even better as planned, you know, the trying with Jupiter increase. And Uranus, it is very likely to give us pleasant surprises, epiphanies, very, very bright ideas, or sudden, at the very last minute, uh, changes, that, but these changes are initiated by us. Suddenly, out of nowhere, we have a light bulb moment, a eureka moment. Something makes so much sense and we apply it. And it gets us very far in that sense, because the trine with Uranus can represent leaps, very, very important leaps forward even quantum leaps. But of course, these are with the smaller mercurial matters and everything that has to do with this Mercury retrograde season. Why? Because Mercury at the beginning of the week is still retrograde in its home sign where the sun is also hosted. So Mercury rules the energy quite strongly here. And of course, Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury as well. So a lot of cerebral energy and it's turning, it's internalized. So, you know, the surprise factor is very likely to come from us, initiated by us or by something that either we think of, dream of, or we hear or receive even as advice and make it our own, of course, because that is the necessity of the requirement of Uranus. And also we have, as you can see, a Venus and Moon conjunction in the sign of Leo, which means they square Jupiter. So we do feel something. Now, on one hand, this energy has frustration, obviously, written all over it, especially that Jupiter likes to expand. And Jupiter always likes to see things, view things in the larger sense, if you know what I mean. So I might be doing very okay with, you know, the smaller Mercury retrograde things in my life. But the big picture, how am I going to get there? Or how am I going to have my justice, Jupiter? How am How is my faith or what I believe in very, very strongly going to be part of my lived reality? How do I manifest something? How do I invent? Do I invest? Because this energy is also with investments, if you know what I mean. If you like to make a bigger purchase or anything that is story and represents a strong value and you love it and it is part of, you know, your normal course of life for you to have it, this period is really putting you on the edge, especially on Monday. Because Mercury retrograde, you might know that the time is not here yet. Or for other people, the opportunity is actually here and you do need to take some action and you might be worried, is it the right choice, the not so right choice? Are you making a wise move? How is the investment going to pay off? So depending on your situation, this does amplify the feeling of are you doing the right thing or better wait or, you know, whatever the situation is in your life individually. And of course, asteroid Juno is also there. So it's actually a triple conjunction. So Juno, maybe you need to consult a partner because Juno is the asteroid of partnerships some or a deal negotiation. Depend. Okay, you have your part, <clears throat> your truth, but there is another person there as well. So... What is their reaction going to be? Maybe you have a promise and you might be dwelling on the fact that is it true or not so true? Can you trust or not? Your mind will tells you something, your heart may be not necessarily something totally different, but you know your heart might be a bit afraid, a bit scared. So this is going to be a day with strong emotions. 
without a shadow of a doubt. And even if there is strong attraction in your life, again, because that moon activates the Venus Juno conjunction even strong, more strongly. And uh, Black Moon Lilith at, in the same sign, at the same time, holds the quincunx to Pluto. So fated events might be coming into your life, but there needs to be a second glance until you identify its fated nature, its karmic nature, or the fact that that is the path you need to take. So this quincunx means that, you no, know, the instinct is very, very powerful so you need to take a step back to look at things from a larger perspective if you know what i mean because otherwise everything can seem fated or nothing seems fated so you really need to get into the details i know that the devil is in the details but capricorn pluto in the sign of capricorn that is very much a devilish energy so to speak not in a bad sense just that it it is not all that clear you really really need to use both instinct but also common very strong sense of common sense in order to understand what you know the divine is reflecting at you and which fated which event which co course of action is fated and which one is not so much uh, and also, I would like to show you another interesting configuration where we have asteroid Vesta at Anoretic Gemini. Vesta is goddess of the sacred flame. She is protector of the household, the family. So very benevolent energy and astrology. And we have asteroid Pallas Athena also at 29 degrees. So anoretic position of the sign of Virgo. And these two, because these are two mutable signs, Virgo and Gemini, they do hold a square okay. with each other. So this is where it's a, a very intellectual energy at this first um, configuration, let's say, because the, both of these planetoids will move on very quickly and they will hold a very same square but in different signs which means their energy and their you know manifestation will be different so in this intellectual energy of gemini and virgo this is where we are desperate palestina anoretically in virgo to already have the picture the plan the perspective that gets us you know to where we need to be uh, and this is where it's anoretic virgo so it's not just the Mercury retrograde themes, but basically everything. That area of life where Virgo is for us personally. And on the world stage, ultimately, this is a situation either where a, a, a minority or a group of people are discriminated from something and that needs a, an urgent, uh, how should I say, an urgent resolution or urgent resolve someone to do something basically uh, and that might be a legal action because the sun trines jupiter so it favors that but it can also be something to do with you know disasters or calamities but the fact how do we solve the damages how do we solve the problem how do we um repair the damages how do we help people so this can mean call for humanitarian action um because later on in the week the sun will start its opposition to neptune so that amongst very many other things might mean humanitarian action this is where we use our intelligence our problem solving skills for the greater good to lend a helping hand to those in need and know with this Neptune uh, having been opposed by Mars and by Pallas Athena and very soon the Sun and then of course when Mercury goes direct by Mercury as well we see the theme of these horrible floods playing out especially in Greece and other parts of the world as well 
So there is a lot of water energy. And Uranus, of course, we saw the seismic activities increase greatly as Uranus went direct. And poor people in Morocco really, really got a, a big earthquake. So we must send a lot of good thoughts their way, of course. But anyway, we might be seeing these play out continuously in the world this week as well, because the activity is definitely there. But what I wanted to say is that the sun also holds a quincunx with Chiron. So again, something might trigger our wounding or it, you know, the sun is in Virgo. So it is also called to offer a service or to solve a problem or to do something in a constructive way. So there is wounding in the world, for example, as I said, due to the natural disasters, the calamities and everything that is going on. And this can also represent, you know, an action of heroism, an action of, you know, helping the way we can Virgo, everyone with their own methodology, everyone with their own solution. So this can, yes, as I said, help, represent a humanitarian action as well. And then as we move on, this is the 12th, so let's move on to the 14th. This is where Vesta is in the sign of Cancer, zero degree, Pelicetina the same, degree of Libra, so they hold the square in this way. So Vesta in Cancer is already emotional energy, the family, or what you regard as family or the home or your roots. Ultimately, you want everything in your life. And by this time, Mercury is really at a standstill, barely moving backwards or barely moving at all. So coming out of retrograde, so this is where the themes are again uh, highlighted here. We feel them. We think about them. They are in our awareness in an amplifying manner. And so we, want, we are including here our family or our home, our roots, everyone or everything that is very, very important, cancer energy, Vesta here. We want to protect them. But Pallas Athena, we must also make compromises because it's not so easy, especially in the sign of Libra, the perspective of the other. How How is my tactics? Because she is a planetoid, which has a lot to do with you know, the tactical approach to life, like a chess game. Even in mythology, Athena always you know, came up with ingenious ideas, sometimes even to bypass what the fates decided, you know what I mean? So she is a very, very cerebral energy. She was born from the, directly straight out of the head of Zeus, Jupiter. So yeah, she is very, very um, intellectual. So in the sign of Libra, it's also taking consideration either the needs or perspective or what others come with terms and conditions, so other people. But also on the 14th, this is where uh, we already have um, almost a new moon in the sign of uh, Virgo. Now, th this new moon takes place either on the 14th or 15th, depending on where you are on the planet. And it's at 21 degrees and 58 uh, minutes of the sign of Virgo. This is one of the more positive and fortunate new moons because uh, you can't see it on my screen yet because I would need to move some hours forwards. This will do so, 21 degree, both of the sun and the moon in the sign of Virgo, and they hold a trine to Uranus. The trine is not exact by the degree, but it's still pretty tight. So Uranus brings the ingenuity. Uranus brings the element of surprise, the, the favorable, unexpected. So this is a new beginning, of course, because a new moon that has a lot of, you know, 
I don't want to say necessarily epiphany, but an inner initiation, an inner impulse, which incorporates our ingenuity, our deeper authenticity, our true values, because Uranus is in the sign of Taurus, of course. So that new beginning is, you know, propulsed, quantum leap, you know, helped in a way by this energy of ingenuity and authenticity. One way or another, it turns into a blessing. But I have a separate video uh, about this new moon, which you can check out. I'll, If I don't forget, I'll link to uh, in the comments below. But also this new moon kind of stand across, stands across the sky from Neptune. Of course, here the degree, the orb of the degree is very, very wide. It's not an exact opposition, but there is an element of disillusionment here. So this is where we need to get it right. We need to incorporate, you know, a moral, divine, compassionate perspective as well but also one that is strictly cerebral mercurial of, in their nature. And this is what the Sabian symbol of this 21, 22 degrees of Virgo suggests as well. If I'm not mistaken, it's a royal coat of arms uh, decorated, embossed with some kind of precious stones and jewels. So the responsibility of the leadership position, a royal coat of arms, and that is the cerebral, cerebral part. But nobility, especially in the old days, had a divine charge as well. They had a divine responsibility and duty because they represented something spiritual as well. So taking into consideration morality or the principle of compassion, Neptune in the sign of Pisces, and this element of disillusionment, that part of the perhaps fantasy, spiritual, deep faith, which is not aligning to practicality or not giving way to practicality, yet the practicality is very much needed and necessary, then we need to you know, tune down that belief, basically. That it can also be a way this opposition plays out. And then we have, at this time, Actually, on the 15th, as you can see, Mercury is already standing still. That S there is that is standing still in the sky preparing to go direct. So that is a very important milestone of this Mercury retrograde because it ends the backward movement and it begins Mercury Tra traversing through its shadow path, wrapping up the Mercury retrograde season. So the following uh, days, so this week after the 15th and next week, until Mercury gets to around 22, 23 degrees of the sign of Virgo, that will be basically it wrapping up, drawing the big conclusions and putting whatever it is that we rethought, reimagined, redid, under this Mercury retrograde, it will put that into application. So it will, you know, put it to good use. But this week, we are going to be feeling it on the 15th very, very strongly. And then moving on a day, we have the Moon uh, conjunct Mars. You can't see it here yet because I need to move. So the 15th, well, we're actually on the 16th now, but I wanted to show you that the moon was conjunct Mars, uh, Mars being in the sign of Libra. But of course, before the moon conjuncts Mars, it will conjunct um, Pallas Athena, then Mackey, planetoid Mackey Mackey, and then finally Mars. And that will highlight basically that around that moment may be important communication, a negotiation, or we if when we look at an agreement or a contract or a partnership or an alliance through a totally different perspective, and it 
you know, also speaks to our emotions. How we feel about it is also very important because later on after the moon moves on from Mars, it will oppose <clears throat> Chiron, Eris, and the North Node, which means it will conjunct the South Node. So either a partnership, an alliance, a decision, a contract will be taken, you know, under the microscope and analyzed emotionally as well. And for, oh, and before I don't forget, at this time the sun perfects its trine with Uranus. So this is a more the more fortunate energy, the more fortunate alignment when you know we have a sense of direction or there is a breakthrough in our lives. Or we know that we are on the path of achieving a breakthrough because everything leads there. Or we have some kind of practical help in our lives, maybe from a professional or someone who can add value. And then the 17th, the end of the week, this is where the sun already starts its opposition to Neptune. So uh, this is not a very easy energy. This might be a bit of disillusionment or when we feel a certain kind of frustration where certain things in our lives, they maybe they make sense in a very rational way, but they don't make sense internally. Our emotions, our feelings, our perhaps subconscious is not accepting the logic. So this might cause a sense of, as I said, disappointment, disillusion, frustration, or confusion. Because if our inner world is not accepting something, not accepting the logic, the faith, the belief of something, well, we need to give it some kind of direction or answers or clarity or comfort. We, we will need to either, you know, uh, give a kind of, Clarity either to this sun in the sign of Virgo. So to get some down-to-earth rational explanation to something that we might be feeling intuitively or within our dream world, you know, Neptune and Pisces, deep within ourselves. Or the opposite, explain something that is very down-to-earth rational and we just know it, we understand it, we accept it. Explain that to the soul. Like, for example... A divorce, uh, an end of a relationship that might be very clear and technically the in a you know, very how should I say down to earth way that it's over and this is why it's over, etc. But the soul might not accept it. You know what I I can the soul might say I can't believe it's over. How how am I gonna live? You know, you know this. So this is an example, but this can be true in very many other things as well, depending on where this opposition falls in your personal chart. Now, on the world stage, I do believe this will mean floods and water where we need to find solutions to this or how do we stop it? How do we help the regions affected? So to me, the, this does say a bit of calamity or some kind of disease or the COVID spiking again. And what do we do? You know what I mean? But let's hope it's not uh, anything important or anything major. So another thing that starts coming online, it's not perfected yet, not exact yet, but it's coming online on the 17th is the sun starting to hold a trine with Pluto, an Earth trine, again, very, very practical. And if we want to necessarily include Uranus, then it's a grand Earth trine that the sun, you know, kind of fixes together. The sun aligns this. So very practical solution or a, something that is very, very promising in a very down-to-earth way is in our awareness, our, the sphere of our consciousness. And we are trying to work with that very, very strongly. And as you move out of Mercury retrograde, so that's 
next week's horoscope and with the influence of this strong, fortunate uh, Virgo new moon, let's see where we get by the end of the week and what that means for us, practically speaking. So thank you everyone for listening. I would like to stop here. Um, wishing everyone a magical and blessed new moon. And until next time, bye for now.